As I reflect more about my early age, from the, was perhaps more like a center of who I was. Of course, you cannot say it's just the time in the past. It's the time in the past, and I cannot talk about it. It's all gone. But as much as all the kids are born and raised, early on in their mind, there was nothing. So they had lots of free-spirited idea of how to live their life. Enjoying and having fun and causing trouble to parents. They experiment and uh, learn lessons, good or bad. And depending upon how the interaction takes place with the friends or the parents, they may develop a good habit or um, not so good habit to live in the society. So my sense is that uh, everybody's got this free-spirited sense. But over time we get uh, depressed or you know we get uh, covered like darkness or the habitual pattern develops, which certainly helps if we know what the good habitual pattern to do certain things. But more we define that, we will lose chance to develop other part of the habit which can be developed, but couldn't. For example, I was not, uh, I'm not a good singer. My mother didn't sing, and that's part of the reason I feel like my family didn't have the sense of the music, except I was curious. So, if I can think of all the dentist lawyers, their sons tend to be dentist lawyers, or painters to painter, like a Picasso. There's so much influence coming to us, the kids, at the early age. So even though there's a free-spirited sense of how you we may develop, of course, certain direction, like a tree branches forming in certain direction for the sun is brighter and the people are having fun, then you get attracted to do such direction, go into that direction. So related to that, what I can remember in this period is that when I was uh, in a kindergarten, I didn't know about this, but I was told that I bit the finger of the teacher. (laughs) I don't know the reason behind, but I can suspect that I didn't like what they are imposing me to do, and I fought against it. Where I got that spirit, or resisting sense, I don't know. Oh, but there's another thing that I can relate to, which is when I was probably five, about the same age of the kindergarten, I remember this incident, something I did wrong, but I was caught by my parents and pushed into this little room where there's the incense for the uh, the Shinto or Buddhism, and they put me down. I couldn't move, and they tried to put that incense, which is lighted, so it's going to burn my skin if they put it. And they're going to tell me, give me a lesson that I shouldn't do certain things. All I remember is that incident, but not the exact reason why they did that. So I had a sense of... Uh, figuring out how to go against the bureaucracy, authority, the conventional way of doing things. And I question why. And I think that spirit I retained for a long time. So when I say free-spirited, it sounds good, but there could be a negative side of the free spirit to go against the rule of the society or authority or bureaucracy. And when I reflect on my interest in Edison, of 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration, is the challenging spirit to go beyond the hurdles. That is also related to the conventional way of doing things. I'm not sure if the free spirit is the right way, but creativity, in my view, has connection to the open-mindedness instead of closed-mindedness. And the point about David Bourne, 
talking about the dark side. He was talking about narrow-mindedness that we may develop. And there's much, much, much bigger than that. And that's my discussion about the two universes, that the, there's a mind universe we may be confined inside, but there's a vast universe, spacious, emptiness, everything can fall into it. The law of universe manifests everywhere on this planet Earth as much as any place in the universe. I can see that in my imagination, and that corresponds to the notion of God, which I'm not so related to because I'm more scientific in the sense of perception, imagination. But I can take it because I sense that Amida Buddha is like God. And when I practice this compassion with the Amida's bow to save everyone, I guess that also point beyond the bureaucracy constraints of the mind and conventional way to be creative. And you are seen as okay to be like that, like a child, a children. That's why Saichi or Shoma, those Myokonin, call Amida Buddha like a Oyasama, parent. Oya is parent in Japanese. And the parent is supposed to be very kind and you know, compassionate and taking care of the kids. And that's the sense that they find. And after going through the Zen, I mentioned this in other videos, but going into Shin Buddhism and Myokonin and realizing what is possible, my exploratory nature was dive into it and found that because perhaps you call it the free spiritedness, that there's nirvana sense of uh, going beyond the hurdles that we can get. So what I'm saying is that the free spiritedness, challenging spirit, exploration, going beyond the hurdles, beyond the conventional belief, all that and also relating to the the jewel bell, I'm not pronouncing it right, but the 15 kids, two years of vacation, you know, stranded in the island and explore how to live. The same spirit, no boundary, no, you, your creativity is the question, how to survive and prosper. So that's the spirit originated from the root of who we are. That's the wording I often use, that we shouldn't lose the root of who we are to live, but only be confined in the mind to do this, do that, because TV says, the internet says, and everybody has it, the cars, luxury, traveling, work, marriage, relationship, everything. So they may hypnotize you. It may make us more narrow-minded because that's the marketing idea of selling something beyond their competitors, which is natural and free enterprise system. I like it. But if it's bombarded and we get conditioned, it's on our side to be careful about those uh, hurdles, you know, conditioning that takes place because... You may be hypnotized to believe Putin is right, Trump is right, nobody else. I don't mean to be politically, you know, agitating, you know, processing. I'm just giving as an example of having a free spirit idea. I use the word of the go back to the Garden of Eden, become a child again, and re train ourselves instead of be confined and confined and confined only this is the way, this is the way to do this, do this, do this, and live like that. So I think that's also connected to David Bones, Bones, you know, thinking of going beyond the narrow-mindedness or dark side of who we are, but be free-spirited. And of course, Physicists like Einstein, you know, Feynman is another one I can think of. You know, to be creative requires that free-spirited sense to go beyond 
the hurdles, the challenges, the conventional way. So maybe I'm self-justifying it. But perhaps the point is that we come from that origin, like the root of the tree. It's something for us to grow, have aliveness, have fun, explore, feel good, and share the fruit with others. And I think that's the notion I'm revisiting my early days from the days of the kindergarten, you know, biting the finger <laughs> and exploring all the other stuff I don't want to talk about. I cannot mention too much of it. But that was a fun period. At first, society cannot function, even though the, in nature, you know, the stealing is not the stealing. They have to live. So the kids are like that. They don't have any rules. So they start to go pick up some strawberries from the field, which I did. <laughs> and, you know, all sorts of interesting things to fool the parents. Actually, at the high school, I remember, we had so much fun time. I had the occasion of jumping off from the window when the class was going on because outside looked so beautiful, so I just went out. And the other occasion was, on the other occasion, I was out of the back door. And this is such a wonderful high school, so when I was out, there was one teacher walking this way. And he didn't say anything about me coming off from the classroom. And I just passed through him and everything is okay. The funny things, he was the math professor, Honjo, I think was his name. Very good school. He became the principal for the math teacher. You know, maybe 15 years later, I revisited and we had a little conversation. So that school was out of ordinary. Come to think about it, that may have helped me to be more radical, if you say it the wrong way, or more curious or free spirited, or even possibly. I don't know if you can connect to the spiritual, but that's going beyond the constraints of the mind that I was relating to. And uh, I think that's good enough. I can talk about some of the girlfriend situation, but uh, probably it's not necessary or appropriate. <laughs> so... I have this somewhat affirmative feeling, even though I may be weird in the way I behave. But that was probably necessary for me to question as much as the scientists question assumptions, how you do the experiment, what's the reason, and go beyond. Living life is the same. So... Later, I may talk about going to Toshiba and the nuclear field engineering. The same kind of notion of the exploration, challenging, coming up with a patent in that instance, or, you know, new theory. That's very interesting, but exploring the potential from early days and having some free-spirited attitude. I'm just self-justifying, probably. And I feel that was good even to the point of the spiritual awakening that happened after. Not to say that that's the end of it. I go through suffering and I need to go through all the necessary process to go beyond. But the origin, the spirit, the seed of who I am, the seed of everyone we got, not in the dark side, but in the free-spirited side of the, or maybe seeing dark side from the mind point of view, because we may not want to think about it, but that's the kind of a seed that we may want to revisit. And I strongly feel, well, up for discussion, but uh, it's okay to peel off the history, background, habit, and how we challenge to make sense out of it. Thank you.